Right, here's where we start for you on all angles this hour. The net is closing in on those implicated in the prison escape of convicted murderer and rapist Tabo Besta. Another G4S employee made a brief appearance this morning in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court. The 51-year-old uh, Madonyani Masugela it was arrested yesterday at the Mangaung Correctional Center. His case has been remanded to the 3rd of May. Let's go to our senior reporter, Sleen Lomasigane, who's been following this case and its development. So, Slee, uh, does this mean he'll form part of uh, the list of uh, accused, along with Nandi Pamakudumana, on the 3rd of May to apply for bail before the 16th uh, of May uh, with the case with Tabo Besta? Yeah, it means exactly that, Masako. We had very brief um, court proceedings this morning in the Bloemfontein Magistrates Court where uh, Mudenyana Budi Masigela made his first appearance in court. Uh, he acquired the assistance of legal aid to get the ball rolling in terms of uh, the charges being put on the record. Um, but at the moment, he remains in custody up until the 3rd of May where he will join Dr. Nandipa um, and, uh, and two others. Uh, because you would remember that this week, uh, Dr. Nandipa's father, Zolile Sekeleni, was granted bail of 10,000 rand. So he'll be joining um, all uh, all uh, four of these accused with Tabo Besta on the 16th um, of May. But in particular, with this particular um, appearance, this particular G4S employee uh, will be back in court on the 3rd of May for a possible bail application. Um, he faces charges of defeating the ends of justice um, as well as aiding and abet uh, abetting a convict. Let's take a listen to the uh, NPA's uh, spokesperson with regards to the charges uh, that he faces and the possibility um, of more arrests. What I can confirm is that uh, another accused who is now accused number six in the matter of Matswara and others has appeared before the court today facing charges of assisting an inmate to escape and defeating the ends of justice. We made the request that the matter be postponed to 3 and 4 May, where he's going to be joined with the other accused in terms of the uh, bail application, as he has already informed the court that he's going to make an application to be released on bail. His name is Motenyana John Masugela. Um, like I said to you, he is facing two charges, which is assisting an inmate to escape from lawful custody. It's only once the investigations have been finalized and we start with a trial where we're going to out, outli outline who was involved and to what extent those will be facing the charges. What, what, what role did they, what role did, is the state going to say they played in assisting an inmate to escape from Mangawan G4S? And Sli, I wonder what legal experts are saying as you speak to them about this entire saga. More and more uh, people added to the list of uh, those who assisted Tabo Besta to escape. Mm. Just to unpack some of the court proceedings we saw this morning, I am joined by legal expert uh, from the UJ Law Clinic, Mr. Alton Hart. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, we really do appreciate it. Maybe then just give me a sense, uh, Mr. Hart, in terms of your analysis of the court proceedings. Quite short this morning, um, just some administrative issues around putting the charges on record. Uh, but we see yet another accused joining uh, Dr. Nandipa and uh, the other co-accused in this escape. So perhaps uh, if you can unpack the charges in particular, uh, just how serious are they and uh, what kind of sentence do they carry if um, he is to be found guilty? Uh, good morning, Esli, and to the listeners. Obviously, if one looks at the charges, and specifically this is like aiding a, a convicted prisoner that uh, Stabu Bester to escape, that is a serious charge because that's undermining our correctional services so he would most probably be sentenced in the regional court. It will be in amongst between three to ten years that he could be facing on this charge because of the nature of the crime that was committed. And obviously, him now being added, that's just a formality because we want to actually close the chain of custody or the chain as to how this act was committed by Tabu Bester when he escaped from Mangaung prison. So we need to get all the people involved. And I think this list is still going to extend further it might end up like we might have 20 to 30 people that's going to be charged specifically with various crimes from murder ranging to the defeating of the ends of justice 
also aiding and abetting a uh, convicted criminal to escape from lawful custody. So there will be a number of charges and obviously one needs to still see as the witnesses comes up as the further investigation proceeds. But I don't see the list of accused people stopping at six or seven. I think it's going to go much further than this. Mm. Maybe then let's speak a little bit about that because it seems the criticism um, for law enforcement and the NPA is around the, around the fact that they seem to be uh, going for the quote-unquote the small fish. Uh, when do we start seeing the arrests of those who are in um, you know, high-ranking uh, positions uh, joining those in the dock? Do you think this might taint um, the uh, court proceedings with regards to those who we see already in the dock if we don't see more um, people who are in high-ranking uh, positions um, uh, coming to court? No, obviously, I say that one needs to sort of have, even if it's for dereliction of duty, some of the officials like the controller from DCS, because he's in charge of that facility, together with the higher uh, place supervisors and managers. Uh, of the G4S uh, company. They need to be added to this. They need to come and account for what they have done or not done in this process with our best escape. So it's not now. We just see people like, like literally low ranking people, people who open gates. And you cannot open a gate in a maximum prison if you are not given authority by from the control room by specific individuals. So where are those individuals? And obviously, if there is the escape that happened, there must be logbooks. People need to take responsibility. Even if I was not there, I am in charge of you, so I oversee, so I need to check. So we need to see more and more people. And I, I hold this view that there is much more higher ranking, not just um, officials like in DCS, police and uh, G4S, but also in political circles that's involved in this double best. Of course, this thing is too seamless that it went under the radar if it was not for the journalists that actually took the information and ran with it. South Africa would have been in the dark about this matter from the get-go. Mm. Maybe then lastly, Mr. Hart, if you can just explain uh, the logic behind joining all the cases into one. We are seeing with this particular matter of um, uh, Mutenyane Musegele that he'll be joining the other co-accused on the 3rd of May. Perhaps uh, administratively, does, this, does, uh, does that just make it easier uh, in order to conduct uh, perhaps the trial in future? Yes, obviously, um, bringing them all together and charging different accused with different charges or trying to prove cause so that you don't get witnesses to come to court to testify on three, four occasions on the same evidence. So once a witness has testified on a specific aspect, then all the legal representatives of the different um, accused can then cross-examine that person on the evidence that is tendered. So you don't need to have like three court settings and listening to the same evidence. So it's just to make the administration easier and also the, the, the court's time. So to condense it all in one and also to and avoid the situation where one witness, uh, one accused can say, but I did not open the gate. It was uh, the accused in another case that opened, then he gets acquitted. And back in that case, the, that accused say, but it was the accused in the other case that opened the gate. So then it's an acquittal. And if once you have acquitted, you cannot be tried again. So I think trying them together, then it also eliminates that option of the one blaming the other, you said, I said, type of situation. So it's better to keep them together. And it's only in exceptional circumstances where we separate the trials. Thank you so much for your time this morning. That is legal expert Mr. Alson Hart from the UJ Law Clinic just unpacking the court proceedings that we saw this morning for the uh, sixth accused in the Tabo Besta escape saga. All right, senior reporter Linda Masigani live for us in Bloemfontein in the Free State.